In this video I'm going to be looking at the atomic opening beginning with the moves knight f3, f6, knight d4, knight h6, knight f5. Now this is a fairly common line. Um, at some time or another I imagine it's been played by pretty much all the top atomic players, although not with particular frequency, apart from Molten Thinker who I think plays it quite a lot, at least he does against me. Um, and generally, White's idea with this line is just to kind of get a playable game, just to kind of get through the opening, um, get a position that he's comfortable with, and isn't going to get caught with any kind of counter punch from Black, which happens a lot in the more kind of complex piece play lines um, in Atomic. Um, Black's forced to really take that. I mean, White was threatening G7 and E7, um, so it's the only move. Now, the most critical move and the most kind of ambitious drive for White is to play Knight C3 here which immediately threatens to come into b5 and d5 but sometimes white does play other moves um, particularly e4 or d4 but these I think give black one of more of a kind of free hand in the center I like the move d5 immediately when now the difference kind of with the main line as you'll see later is that if white brings out the knight say to a3 black can play, play b5 or if white played the knight to c3 again d b5 just kind of clamps down on this knight and you've got the both d5 and b5 squares covered um, so I mean white can continue with d4 and then e5 I quite like I think black's doing quite well here well at least I don't think black's worse um, he's got his fair share of the centre and you know he has, it's not really on the defensive at all um, so I think you can say from that I mean black's already doing okay he's got his fair share of the chances Probably coming to a3 is slightly more, um, slightly safer option for for white. And again, b5 clamping down, d4. This is kind of a natural move that white will play. It's kind of getting this kind of pawn play center. Um, and now I generally like going for e5. Not really kind of giving up my, the black share share of the play. And I just feel this is quite comfortable for for black. I mean, just to give like an indicative kind of line. I mean, the c3 is quite natural. Black, sorry, white, sorry, is often hoping to kind of capture on d5 and use this diagonal a2 to g8 for his queen to come out to b3 or bishop to c4 in some lines. Of course, um, you can't play queen b3 immediately because the knight on a3 is hanging, but in the future, often it becomes a um, tactical motif. But g6, just kind of developing this bishop to h6, maybe bishop h6 takes. Uh, e takes d5, kind of showing that idea. Now, if it was White's move, then Queen b3 would be uh, a pretty crunching move. But Black play e4, so this takes the pressure off e5. So now, if Queen b3, Bishop e6 is possible. So, say Bishop c4. This happened in a game between um, when I was playing Black against the very strong atomic player Grand Lapin on Fix. And now, Bishop e6, I think, is okay. I played e3. Um, which I think is also fairly good F takes now here I think I made a mistake um, the game against Grand Lapin continued Bishop G4 castles so now White already has quite a lot of threats um, along the E file um, so I mean I took on C4 which it's hard to really find a good move for Black here I think Bishop G4 was a mistake I mean I took this and after Queen E2 check Bishop takes, Rook e1, a nice queen sack there by Grand Lapin, um, Black's just completely lost. But instead of playing uh, Bishop g4, quite a decent move is Queen e7 check, uh, and then Bishop e6 just to block that, and Bishop e7, and it's just kind of an unclear game, both sides have chances, so Black's certainly not uh, come off worse out of that. I mean, that was just an indicative line. I mean, there's lots of different options that black can play. I mean, g6 isn't forced, even. It's just a, just a game, really. Black's got his fair share of chances. Similarly, d4 can be answered with d5. And then, again, after e4, e5. It's just the same moves generally black's playing against the different white move orders. And it'll probably transpose after knight a3. So, knight c3 is what generally uh, is played here which forces black to play c6. This is the kind of point really. You force black to play this kind of move c6 when you'd much rather play the pawns on d5 and b5. 
So now e4 is the main move. Again, I mean, white doesn't have to play that. You can play d4 first. Although I don't really see much of an advantage to playing d4. I mean, black can choose to play in the same style as the kind of main line after e4 with with the move g6, or he can try and play, or he can play d5, which is an option he doesn't really have after the move e4. And now the point is again e4, b5. You've got black's a tempo down. Well, c6 isn't a complete waste of tempo, but given the choice, you'd rather have played e5. But still, I think this is okay for black. Um, although of course as I mentioned G6 is also perfectly okay but E4 is a little bit more critical you're opening up the Queen you're threatening Knight D5 and also opening up the Bishop for a lot of options so D5 now is not a very good idea because Knight D5 um, and this is just kind of a common tactical option that Black, the White has really Knight C6 and now King F1 um, D4 is also good but King F1 is kind of nice I like this in that you're now you're actually threatening to capture on d5 with the pawn, and d2 isn't hanging, um, and of course the queen's threatening to come out to h5 as well. So if white track simply pushes this, the queen comes out to h5 with a winning game, and there's not really a very good defence here for for black at all. So d5 is definitely a mistake. Instead, I'd recommend playing g6 with the idea of just bringing the bishop out to h6. Now, white has two real kind of approaches to this position. The kind of, I would say, kind of classical approach is to play d4, just get this big pawn centre, um, and then look for opportunities for peace play um, afterwards. So black continues with his plan of bishop h6, so you're threatening um, to come into white's position, so white has to either take it or play bishop g5, or bishop f4, I suppose. <laughs> or f4 now I think about it, f4 is possible as well but that's not going to be very critical after d5 opening up this bishop to g4 say g4, knight a6 um, captures e5, black's perfectly okay um, I mean so is wide, I mean you can play like that and get a reasonable game um, bishop f4 is going to transpose to another line after e5 knight b5 takes here knight c6. I'll be looking at this position from a different move order in um, when white sacrifices a knight on d5 but just to bear in mind I mean that does transpose to another line. Taking on h6 is also fine for white. I mean you can play b5 here just stopping any ideas of a peace sacrifice followed by bishop b5 and black's doing okay and similarly after bishop g5. I think bishop g5 is probably slightly more accurate than taking because with the Bishop staying on g5, the idea of, say after b5, playing the pawn push h4, h5, maybe not immediately, but at some case, some position, it is a little bit more dangerous for white. Um, I mean, if you play it here, then black will simply play in the centre, and okay, chances for both sides. Probably a little bit more ambitious option for, for white here is to play d5. Um, again, this happened in a game, Grand Lapin was white against me, um, and I played d6, h4, gave it this idea, after you've gained a little bit of space, now e5, uh, h5, b4, again, I mean, there are different options for both sides, but this is just to kind of show an idea of, of play, um, so this is happened between Grand Lapin against me, so h5, Bishop e2. Um, so you've got ideas of capturing on h5 in some positions, or maybe just b uh, breaking through over here with these pawns. So I played b3, and he sacrificed a piece. And now here, uh, again, I'm, I played bishop g4, which, as in the previous example, it was actually a mistake. Um, I should have played a5, I think, and um, I think black's better here. Okay, I mean, this wasn't forced white obviously didn't have to go into this, but um, just to show black's players, okay. Right, so I mean that's one way that white can play it with d4, and then I think bishop h6 is just fairly okay for black. The more critical line is knight d5. This is kind of like a fairly standard piece sacrifice. I remember this never used to really be played um, 
these kind of ideas. But I kind of introduced these kind of ideas in the, my opening with one knight c3, knight f6, e4. And since then it's kind of spread a bit to other openings and it's kind of caught on a bit here as well. And knight c6 is forced, d4, and now bishop h6 is a natural move. Now, if if black has time, he's going to basically castle, move the d-pawn, and then this knight on c6 will be able to move. And one, if black gets all those moves in, then this peace sacrifice hasn't really worked out very well for white. If he, especially if he has to, say, give up the bishop on, on c6 for the knight. Black will simply have a slightly better position. So, for example, if white just plays something like bishop g5, castles, I think black's basically just fine. Um, you have to play something a bit faster, a bit more ambitious. And that's the move bishop f4, I think, is the most dangerous. And I saw a few years ago, this line was kind of being played a lot by a strong player, um, Jason Martinez, on uh, Fix. I think he's originally a Buho 21 player. But um, there was a big tournament going on in 2011. And I played against him in the first, in one of my first matchups in that tournament. And he came and he played this this against me, and um, I didn't defend accurately enough at the time, and actually ended up losing the game. Um, so I since looked at it quite a bit, and I think Black with with accurate play does do okay, uh, but you have to be careful. I mean, if Black just simply castles continues with castles, the Bishop comes to c6, and I actually think this is quite good for White. Um, this hasn't actually been played as far as I know, but I mean, this Bishop d2 check, I guess, is the reason why people don't like it. But black doesn't have enough here, and is in quite a bit of trouble. So black really has to play e5, and now bishop g5. So white's actually got a, got a clever idea here, you know, given black a whole tempo of e5. But it's actually really a tempo that black doesn't want, because he significantly weakened this diagonal from a2 to g8, um, which after c3, the queen will come out and really attack that diagonal. Um, so, for example, I mean, the game I mentioned where I was black against uh, Jason Martinez was d6, c3, and now, immediately, white's threatened to come out with the queen to b3. I mean, I stopped that by playing queen a5, but here, my opponent played, I'm not sure, what my, I can't remember what my opponent played here, um, but he did go on to win the game anyway, but he actually had a better move here with bishop a6. This is the reason why I wouldn't can, wouldn't repeat this. It's bishop a6, and I think um, basically white's winning already. I mean, the critical line would be bishop g4, f3, queen a4, trying to get away from this explosion on a6, b3, queen a3, captures queen b2, and simply black doesn't have enough play. I mean, white blocks it with queen there, and after this, white simply has two pawns for a piece, and should be able to convert the winning endgame. So instead of d6, the best move, I think, is castles. And the point of this is that after c3, you can run with the king, king h8. I should note mention that this isn't the only option. I mean, there is a move f takes g5, which is also interesting, opening up the rook. Um, I think I've analysed this position as well, and I think black's doing OK here. But there are some lines where it's hard to avoid a, a false draw. Uh, for example, well, I'll just show you this game. This was a game Jason Martinez was white again against Recursive, another strong player, um, on free chess. And that game went f3. Um, so black played the standard tactic coming to h3. I mean, white probably counted on this move, queen b3, as being winning. But in actual fact, it's not quite, because d5 captures bishop b6. White might immediately think, oh, black's just giving away pieces to avoid the mate, and eventually it's going to happen. But now black comes back with queen e6 check. And the point of this is that if white captures it, you're actually coming in with the rook, and you're giving away all your pieces, but you're going to get at least a perpetual check um, with a draw. So Jason Martinez played king f1, kind of a way he's trying to avoid the draw. But queen c4, king g1, kind of relying on this pin. It's kind of a nice sequence. I mean, then black unpins his king as well. And after captures, rookie 8, we end up with that situation where it's going to be a draw. And I mean, the game ended like this. Rookie 8, f4, rookie 2, and it's, going to, and it's a draw. 
Um, and it's quite hard to really see how to avoid that. Um, so, I mean, I guess that that is a possible line. Obviously, a draw as black isn't too bad. Um, but king h1, I kind of keeps playing in the position. Now, queen b3, I suppose, is natural. Rook f7, h4. Kind of white's trying to really attack. So black should really capture that. h5, g5. And I think black is more than okay here, really. I mean, I don't think... I think if anyone's trying to be equalised, it's going to be white now. Um, because this knight's already unpinning itself. It's going to come to b4 very quickly. Um, so castles... Now, even knight b4 uh, immediately is fairly decent. Also h6, d6 are possibilities. I'm going to look at knight b4, because, I mean, you're attacking on a2 immediately, so it doesn't matter if white takes here, because knight takes a2 will be good for black. You have an extra rook. Um, so a4, and now the knight can hop into d3, attacking f2 and b2. So white, white really has to give away the back the bishop for this knight. And now b5, and I think black's actually better here. Um, I'm sure white has some improvements in some points, um, and you know it's a dangerous line. But I think in that kind of if white goes for that critical lines, um, then yeah, king h8 is a nice move, and he's doing okay. So that's really um, all I'm going to mention about this knight f5 move. Um, in the next video, I'll, I'll be looking at a different line um, within the knight f3 complex. Um, so yeah, I hope you come back and watch that.